There are sounds forever tied to the soul of 20th century America. The raspy metallic echo that rolled across the nation's endless highways. And for those who lived through the golden age of heavy haul trucking, that sound was unmistakable. The Detroit Diesel 71 series, the steel-voiced heartbeat of convoys carrying America's ambitions from one ocean to the other. People called it Screaming Jimmy, a howl both fierce and proud, a symbol of the industrial strength that once lifted Detroit to its highest peak. But behind that glory lay a quiet paradox, an empire that had dominated for decades began to tremble under the weight of its own belief in invincibility. Detroit Diesel did not fall because it lacked engineering skill. It fell because it refused to believe that the world had changed. When the market shifted, they stood still, and that very stubbornness marked the beginning of a decline that would stretch on for many years. Going back to the late 1930s, when the United States was still struggling between economic recession and the looming shadow of war, General Motors decided to do something bold. Create a division dedicated to small diesel engines for military, industrial, and transportation use. And in 1938, the name Detroit Diesel officially came into existence. No one knew they were witnessing the beginning of one of the most significant engineering revolutions of the 20th century. From the very first prototypes, Detroit chose a path that few manufacturers dared to follow, the two-stroke diesel engine. While the rest of the world remained faithful to the four-stroke, stable, easy to manufacture, predictable, Detroit placed its bet on a technology that allowed the engine to fire every revolution, creating a power density never seen before. With each cylinder carrying 71 cubic inches, a 4.25 inch bore, a five inch stroke, and the ability to climb to 2,100 RPM. The 71 series quickly proved it was no reckless experiment, but a genuine technological leap. The secret lay in the roots blower, a forced air scavenging system that swept the combustion chamber clean and fed fresh oxygen instantly. Without the blower, a two-stroke diesel could hardly run at all. But with it, Detroit Diesel created something competitors could not match. Superior power to weight ratio, compact size, strong pulling power, and reliable starting in any condition. Thanks to its modular architecture, one of the smartest design philosophies of its time, Detroit could stack cylinders into inline, V6, V8, or V12 configurations without altering the fundamental platform. This transformed the 71 series into a uniquely versatile engine family, suitable for trucks, boats, generators, military vehicles, and countless industrial applications. By the early 1950s, its reputation spread so widely that long-haul drivers gave it the nickname that would later become iconic, Screaming Jimmy. The Detroit Diesel 71 series was not just a successful product. It became the backbone of American transportation. With the post-war economic boom and freight demand surging, Detroit Diesel, compact, durable, and competitively priced, claimed every market segment it touched. In the trucking world, the 6V71 with 238 horsepower was practically the default image on the highway. Long-haul convoys running from Chicago down to Texas, from the East Coast to the West, all carried the unmistakable scream of the Jimmy. For heavier loads, the 8V71 with 318 horsepower became the safe, easily repaired, low-cost choice, something every fleet owner understood the value of. But the influence of the 71 series did not stop on land. The US military quickly recognized the advantages 
of the modular two-stroke design. The M113, one of the most widely used armored vehicles in the world, ran a 6V-53. The battlefield recovery vehicle M88 carried an 8V-71. At sea, many small patrol boats used twin 12V-71s, producing more than 435 horsepower, combined, stable, and easy to maintain even under harsh conditions. What made Detroit a dominant force was not only engineering, but economics. In 1965, a 6V-71 cost just $8,500, significantly cheaper than the Caterpillar 1673 at $11,200. With overhauls every 300,000 miles, readily available parts, and technicians familiar with two-stroke construction, Detroit became the no-brainer choice. By 1970, Detroit Diesel held more than 35% of the heavy truck engine market, a feat no other American diesel manufacturer had achieved. It was the moment they stood at the summit. But like every summit, behind it always lies a slope. And that turning point came in 1973 when the energy crisis erupted, sending fuel prices soaring from 38 cents to over $1 per gallon. In an instant, fuel was no longer an expense that could be easily overlooked. It became the decisive factor determining the survival of every transportation business. It was at that moment that Detroit Diesel's fatal weakness emerged like a crack, running down the hull of a ship everyone once believed unsinkable. The two-stroke engines, long praised for their brute strength, carried an unavoidable burden. The roots blower constantly siphoned off a portion of the crankshaft's power just to stay alive. Even when the truck sat idling, the blower continued to consume energy, creating a parasitic load that few had noticed before. But in an age of skyrocketing fuel prices, it instantly became a life or death issue. Real-world measurements of the time revealed a bitter truth. The Detroit 6V71 often achieved only 4.0 to 4.8 miles per gallon, depending on load and conditions. Meanwhile, competitors like the Caterpillar 3406 and the Cummins Big Cam were already reaching 5.5 to 6.0 miles per gallon a seemingly small improvement that carried enormous economic weight. A difference of just 1 to 1.5 miles per gallon meant that a truck running 100,000 miles per year could burn thousands of dollars in extra fuel. And when the wallet suffers, the loyalty of fleet owners cracks with it. However, it was the tightening legal regulations that truly stunned Detroit. Due to the scavenging design, intake and exhaust open simultaneously, the two-stroke emitted unburned hydrocarbons at levels three times higher than a four-stroke engine. When the EPA issued new standards in 1974, Detroit had virtually no choice but to reduce the 6V71's output from 238 horsepower to 210 horsepower. Yet lowering the power did nothing to make the engine more efficient. Customers received a weaker truck that still consumed just as much fuel. At the same time, Jimmy's trademark Scream, once beloved across American highways, began to be labeled as noise pollution and was banned in many urban areas and even seaports. An engine once admired was now becoming stigmatized by the very traits that had made it legendary. While Detroit struggled in this tightening spiral, competitors moved forward as if they had been waiting for this moment all along. Caterpillar launched the 3406 with strong torque at 1,200 RPM, delivering the smoothness and steady pull long-haul drivers desired. Cummins released the Cummins Confidence Campaign. 
cleverly emphasizing durability and economic efficiency, the two factors the market now valued above all else. Detroit Diesel still hoped that strength and tradition would keep customers from leaving, but the era had changed. Expensive fuel, stricter laws, and emerging technologies meant that the sound of the screaming Jimmy was no longer the voice of the future, but merely the echo of a fading era. And when Detroit Diesel's engineers realized this, they proposed shifting to a four-stroke design, cleaner, more efficient, and aligned with new standards. Yet inside Detroit's meeting rooms, the idea was often dismissed. Leadership believed customers still wanted power, believed the screaming Jimmy was an irreplaceable legacy, and believed the market would return to the way it had been in the 1960s. That belief became the chain that bound a once mighty empire. In that context, Detroit released the Series 92 in 1974, hoping to expand the two-stroke philosophy. Increasing displacement to 92 cubic inches created an initial impression of power, but at its core, it remained old technology. The engine ran hotter, consumed more fuel, struggled to meet emission standards, and lacked the durability of the 71 series. These weaknesses surfaced precisely when customers needed economy and stability, turning the Series 92 into a decisively flawed move. As a result, by 1980, Detroit Diesel's market share had fallen to around 20%, a sharp decline from its peak just a decade before. Long-time fleet owners began switching to Cummins and Caterpillar, not because they wanted to abandon the Jimmy, but because Detroit no longer gave them a compelling reason to stay. While competitors innovated relentlessly, Detroit remained trapped in its own pride. At this moment, Detroit was forced to do what they should have done more than a decade earlier, step into the era of the four-stroke engine. In 1987, they introduced the Series 60, an entirely new engine, marking the first time in Detroit Diesel's history that they released a four-stroke inline six-cylinder model with a modern OHC layout. And more importantly, it carried a technology that would later become an industry standard, the DDEC electronic control system. With DDEC, the Series 60 could regulate fuel injection with precision, improving efficiency by up to 8% while significantly reducing emissions, qualities that customers at the time valued more than raw power. Yet the irony for Detroit was that they were now selling the very thing they once mocked, low RPM torque, smooth operation, and dependence on electronics. To many loyal users, Detroit seemed to be denying its own heritage just to chase competitors. And although the Series 60 was a remarkable technical leap, it arrived far too late. By the time it debuted, Detroit's market share had fallen below 5%. The dealer network that once stretched across the United States had collapsed or switched to selling Cummins and CAT. Even worse, the first batches of the Series 60 suffered from cracked cylinder heads and electronic failures, shaking the already fragile confidence of customers. In the end, GM had no choice. In 1988, Detroit Diesel was sold to Penske for only $300 million, a belated admission that the race had slipped out of their hands long ago. Entering the 1990s, Detroit Diesel now had the Series 60, one of the most modern and promising four-stroke engines in America. But the era no longer belonged to them. The heavy-duty truck market was dominated by two giants, Cummins and Caterpillar, each holding 35 to 40 percent of the market. Detroit, once a symbol of American mechanical strength, now held barely a tenth of that. Although there were encouraging signs 
as the Series 60 gradually proved its reliability, Detroit Diesel faced a problem greater than engineering – money. They had moved far too late in the transition from two-stroke to four-stroke, and the technological gap with competitors had widened for more than a decade. Closing that gap required massive investment in new production lines, new materials, and modern test facilities. Yet the resources simply weren't there. Detroit attempted to solve this by going public in 1993, hoping to raise enough capital for a full-scale modernization. But the funds raised were far too small compared to what was needed, while the cost of operating an aging manufacturing base continued to rise. Independent dealers had long abandoned Detroit for brands with clearer futures. By the late 1990s, Detroit Diesel still had a name, but had lost its influence. The Series 60 could not save the company. It only proved that Detroit was capable of innovation, but had innovated far too late. In 2000, Daimler Chrysler acquired Detroit Diesel for $423 million, ending the brand's existence as an independent American company. A golden chapter closed, and the screaming Jimmy faded into the memories of those who lived through the era it once dominated. Looking back at the journey of Detroit Diesel, we can clearly see a paradox that Roger Penske once stated bluntly, they had the best engines in the world, but they stopped listening to their customers. It is a costly lesson, not only for the mechanical industry, but for every race in business. It doesn't matter how fast you were yesterday. What matters is whether you can still keep up today. Between confidence and arrogance lies only a thin line, and Detroit Diesel stepped over that line in the wrong direction. Even so, the screaming Jimmy lives on in the memories of those who once heard it howl across America's highways, a symbol of an era when mechanical strength carried with it boldness and a boundless sense of freedom. And now, I want to hear your thoughts. Are you a fan of the Screaming Jimmy's iconic scream, or do you prefer the smoothness and efficiency of modern four-stroke engines? Leave your comment below. If you enjoy stories about the history of American trucking, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. See you next time.